Welcome to Ask Kate, brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about NF1 and tibial dysplasia, which is also called pseudoarthrosis. This is a bone deformity that can occur in NF1. It's considered to be congenital, which means that it's seen at birth and usually noticed uh, within the first year of life. And what it is, essentially, is that in the lower half of your leg, you have two bones. One of them is the tibia. And so what happens is that instead of that bone being straight and strong, it's curved. It has a bowing that happens. And the reason we call it pseudoarthrosis is because that's a big fancy word for a fake joint or a false joint. And that curving creates a point that's sort of like a false joint where it's not supposed to be there. And it's very weak and it puts that bone at very high risk for fracture. The most significant issue with this is that because the bone congenitally from birth was not formed correctly, once it fractures, it's very hard to get reunion of the bone. So if you were to have just a normal break, like you break your arm or some healthy bone, um, they can put those bones back together, right? Sometimes it's just a cast, sometimes there's surgery, they put some pins in there, they get it to kind of come back together and then your body norm naturally creates osteoclasts, which are these cells that come and reform the bone and it grows back together, right? And you get a strong bone again. The problem with pseudoarthrosis in the lower leg, in that tibia, is that the, the bone is so weak in that one spot that it breaks and then it's very hard to get reunion because the bone was never really formed properly in the first place. So this is a, a more rare um, symptom of NF1. It's not as common as, say, for example, cafe au lait spots, but I have had patients that the diagnosis of NF1 came after the diagnosis of pseudoarthrosis. It's a lot of rhyming words all the osis words. And so the um, it's important that this be diagnosed as early as possible to prevent fracture. There is a, a lot of discussion in the NF community about the best way to treat tibial dysplasia. And I'm always happy to talk with families directly about your experiences with this, maybe who you've seen, or if you need help finding someone to see if your child has this diagnosis and you want to get more information, then please contact me. Um, essentially, the important thing is that it's identified early before the child starts walking so that there can be um, supportive bracing on the leg to prevent that fracture. Um, and again, um, in some cases, if the fracture does happen, for many years, kind of our best intervention was an amputation of the lower part of the leg, which probably sounds really extreme, but again, we can't get that bone to come back together after the fracture, which means we can't give you a nice strong uh, bone to stand on. And so a frac uh, an amputation was one of the ways that we uh, addressed that. And that is still an option some families go with, um, but there are definitely um, a variety of ways of treating tibial dysplasia. And so I'm always happy to hear from the community in the comments or in emails to me about what your experience has been with yourself or your child. And, um, and I think we can really help to educate each other about that. So um, if you have any questions, as always, please leave a comment, or send me an email. Um, let's continue the conversation about NF1 and NF2 and schwannomatosis, because that is why we are here. Have a great day.